It's going to be Collinsville against Manuel tomorrow. Minute 56 remaining as Simpson makes the free throw. And Simpson, who did not score in the first half, has nine so far in the second half. And it's 67-42. Redmond tips that ball out, but up with it is Bjorstrom of East Rockford. Clears it to Forrest. Minute 51 remaining. Forrest to the free throw line. 15-footer is good. With the ball is Simpson down the side, and Meadows brings it quickly into the forecourt. Over to Riddle. Riddle is a very agile boy at 6'4". Handles the ball very well on the dribble. Drives exceptionally well for a high school boy. In this game, Collinsville 67, Eastern the State, I think has uh, brought some pretty fair credentials to this tournament this afternoon. Yes, he, two boys particularly, Redmond and Riddle, are, are spectacular basketball players. They have a maturity far ahead of the high school, the general high school level. A great sense of, of pressure and, and the just seem to handle themselves without getting in the least bit flustered despite the pressure we know exists in this state tournament level. Number Jack, 30. I'm sure the boy on the floor there. No, we're all right now. Got a whole new lineup in there for the Cahawks. Number 32 putting the ball in is uh, Than Burkett. And Joe Brennan, number 42, is in. Number 24 is uh, Ron Martin, whom we told you about a bit earlier. That is, we mentioned him a bit earlier. Uh, Matakaitis is number 34 as the Cahawks coach Verge Fletcher with a minute 15 now remaining has Corrine the basket by Hildreth did not count number 44 and at the free throw line is Ron Martin Nelson is coming out is in. Jack McDaniel is in number 33. Free throw by Martin is good. So Ron Martin breaks into the scoring column here for the Cahawks. 68-46 and uh, this is the bonus being attempted. 69-46 Collinsville and again East Rockford fails to comply with the Rules and regulations, they were over the line trying to put the ball in play, and it's out of bounds to the Cahawks. Flip goes into Hildreth in the corner, who fires a high, arching two-hander and scores. Harry Hildreth gets a two-pointer, and it's 71-46. Forrest with the ball over the 10-second line, stops. 12 seconds remain. Flip over in the far side. With that ball is Jack McDaniel. That's back out to Forrest, who shoots. He comes up short. Doreen tries to put it up, and a foul is going to be called on Collinsville. We'll check it. It's on. Well, either uh, Martin or Matakaitis. Uh, Matakaitis. Both boys had their hands up. <laughs> Free throw line is Thorine. Thorine, the biggest man in the court, has picked up 17 points. That's his 18. It is 71-47, and I don't think anybody would have told you the score would have had this big a difference prior to this ball game. Thorine gets the second. 19 points, a long pass goes over the end of the court, out of bounds as the gun finds the end of the ball game between Collinsville and East Rockford with Collinsville beating East Rockford 71 to 48. And I might repeat the statement I tried to make a moment ago that prior to this game this afternoon, this quarterfinal round game, I don't believe uh, even the most that Collinsville fan would have told you that his ball club would have beaten East Rockford by 23 points. And yet Collinsville brought some excellent credentials to the state tournament, and they are hoping to become the fifth team in the history of Illinois State High School basketball play to win the state crown with an unblemished mark. Only four other schools have done it, and Collinsville would like to become the fifth on record. A tremendous performance from three exceptional ball players, Bogey Redmond, Brad Riddle, and Bob Bazola, with some tremendous field gentlemanship coming from young Mr. Meadows and Mr. Simpson. 
all a very fine basketball team here in this tournament. We will have the statistics on this game for you in just a moment, but first, here is Chick Hearn. Well, I guess we know now why Collinsville's been rated number one and why they are labeled as the team to beat in this tournament. Boy, they're quite an aggregation, both offensively and defensively, limiting East Rockford to just 48 points and themselves making 71. I was just checking here while Jack and Tom were working. Collinsville this year has averaged just a fraction under 80 points a game. And for high school basketball, in which games are only 32 minutes long, that is a sensational average. Two and a half points a minute, approximately. These kids can really play the game, and they're going to be a tough one to take out. 71-48, Virgil Fletcher's club winning the ball game. I suppose that tonight's games will be just as exciting. And you know... The men and women of the telephone company are awfully glad to be able to bring you these games of the state high school basketball tournament each year on television. This is our 10th tournament on TV, and boy, we always like to hear from you with your comments and your suggestions. Why don't you just drop us a card or a letter? The address is Tournament Television, Box A, Illinois Bell Telephone Company, Chicago 6, Illinois. Now here are Tom and Jack with a summary. You have the quarter scores there, Jack? Yeah. 13-10, 31-19. The final score in this ball game, Jack, 71 to 48, as the Collinsville Ball Club completely dominated play and uh, coasted on to an impressive 23-point win over a very fine East Rockford Ball Club that couldn't quite seem to cope with this Collinsville superiority. This is a very good basketball team. They have certainly impressed yours truly. Yes, and I think everybody else that had a chance to watch them, particularly those that have yet to play them. Uh, Bogey Redmond made a total of 25 points. Fred Riddle, uh, right behind him for Collinsville, 17. And Bob Basola next with 13. And Bob Simpson, who did it all in the second half, got a total of nine. Now for Rockford East, Skip Corrine led with 19 points. But uh, his 24-point average suffered with this game with the very fine defensive work that was going on against him. First, it was Bogey Redmond. Then when Redmond picked up three personal fouls just before the first half ended, Fred Riddle was assigned to skip Doreen. And uh, Redmond stayed out of range and kept himself out of any dangerous circumstances foul-wise. Jack, uh, Doreen, the biggest man on the floor, never did play under the basket. I, I know hindsight is certainly tremendous. But I wonder why. I would guess that he just didn't have maneuvering room with both uh, Redman and, and Fred Riddle. Riddle combining on him. Down. Both of them with plenty of size. Uh, pass was blocked away from him. And going with that basketball was John McKibben, who dribbled it out of bounds. Bogey Redman has it off to the side. just holding on to the ball now, playing catch with it. Using up the clock, which shows a little better than two minutes to play. Bogey Redmond goes underneath, reverse layup, has it in there. And that's 31 points for Redmond. Long pass to Leon Clark is too long. It's out of bounds. Collinsville has the ball. They lead 80 to 43 with 145 left to play. Leon Clark gets this one. Drives in and misses. Clark has it again. Turnaround jump shot is good. That is the first basket by Leon Clark tonight. Incredible. Collinsville calls for a timeout, walks over to the bench to get a standing ovation from their rooting section. Because, of course, this is the 1961 state championship team. There's Bogey Redmond with his back to us, towering above his coach, Virgil Fletcher. He has recorded 31 points. And now they're going to bring in the substitutes for Collinsville. Red Riddle slipping on his jacket. Bogey Redmond slipping his on. Riddle walks away with 24 points. Redmond with 31. Bob Simpson has recorded nine. Basola's recorded 12. 
There's the scoreboard with 121 left, 80 to 45 Collinsville, and these are the boys that'll finish out the game. Number 32 is Stan Birkett. Number 42 is Joe Brennan. Number 24 already in there is Ron Martin. Number 34 is Ronnie Matakaitis. Forty-four is Harry Hildreth. Hildreth tries a one-hander and it's eighty-two to forty-five. Underneath to Leon Clark and he spins around, stuffs it in for his second basket of the night and was fouled in the process. Martin, number 24, committed the foul. We have less than a minute to play. This is Leon Clark. And he hits. 82 to 48. Martin turns around. It misses. Thornton with the rebound. 38 seconds to go. Lindsay drives in and scores. Fred Lindsay gets that basket to make it 82 to 50. Now Collinsville over Thornton. They're giving the players a fake count, uh, wanting them to shoot again. It's uh, you heard him on the countdown, but they were counting down to 20 seconds. Number 32 goes to the line, Van Birkett. Marvin Keeley, number 14, committed the foul on uh, Thornton's part. 20 seconds left to play in this basketball game. Birkett at the line, in and out. Two shots coming. He's taken one, now he's got the second one coming up. There was a quick look at the Collinsville bench. Birkett's shot misses. Rebound is taken by Lubin Poindexter. Long heave up the court too long. Goes on out of bounds. Belongs to Collinsville. Birkett taking it in. Hildreth now with the ball back to Birkett. Eight. You can hear the crowd counting it down for real now, but that shut it off as a foul called against Keeling. And Birkett will go to the line to shoot one with seven seconds left to play. It'll be a one and one. Unless they record it as a deliberate foul, but uh, did not, one and one. Birkett puts it in. That makes it 83 to 50. Now the bonus shot. That's good. 84 to 50. Out of bounds with five seconds remaining. Three. Wait, the clock is stopped now because that one went into the crowd. Whoops, they'll have to stop play again, I believe, as a roll of paper came out on the floor. <laughs> Gunner's off, and the ball rims in and out, and that is the ball game. 84 to 50, Collinsville over Thornton of Harvey, and now let's watch them really live. Virgil Fletcher out on the court to greet his ball club. And up goes Virgil Fletcher for the traditional victor's ride. Virgil Fletcher being carried about the basketball court by his victorious Collinsville team. Collinsville state champions for 1961, and believe me, there was no doubt about it. This team really, once they got past Centralia in the super sectional round, had no further problems. Photographers ring around the highly lifted coach Virgil Fletcher now as he has brought his team to an undefeated conquest of the entire state of Illinois, at least such of them as he could get into a basketball game. Collinsville undefeated, 32 victories, no defeats on this 1961 season, playing with the poise, the balance, the maturity, the expertness of true champions in every single contest. The teams now that uh, played this evening will gather around on the court for the trophies that will go to the various placements. But uh, very highly happy. 
Evansville rooting section is now saving one last great burst of noise for the moment when their team is introduced as the state champions of 1961. without a blem blemish to its record. The youngest in the champion. In the minds of many people in this gymnasium, they would say this is one of the finest high school basketball teams they have ever seen. Outstanding group of athletes, it's a distinct pleasure in behalf of the Illinois High School Association to present this most coveted award in high school basketball, the state champions of 1961. a champion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitzhugh. Have a wonderful trip home. Be careful. We'd like to see you all back next year. Good night. Jack Linders for Collinsville. Uh, 31 points, what a ball player. And let's see, it was Riddle with 24 and Basola with 12. Well now for an interview with the 1961 winning team, let's switch down to Chick Hearn. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm surrounded by one of the great basketball teams in the state of Illinois basketball history, the state champion, Collinsville Cahawks. And I'd like you to meet some of the boys and particularly I'd like you to meet a fellow that has turned in down through the years, one of the great coaching jobs that we've known in basketball, Mr. Virgil Fletcher. This is the fifth time that Virgil has brought a team to the state, and it's the first time he's won. But by golly, you've always been in there clawing, and I don't think anybody's happier for you than everybody here tonight well, and all over the state. Chick, we almost made it in 57, you know. We got beat in the final game. We were undefeated going in that ball game, too. We'd won 34 in a row. That's right. Now, you join a very select group of four other teams that have gone all the way undefeated, and uh, certainly that puts you in a pretty high echelon. Is yes, this the yes. best club you've ever Th had? This is the best, and I think it's one of the best teams to ever play on this gymnasium floor. I would agree with you on that, and I think that the patterns that you have these boys running offensively, your press defense in the zone, as good as we've ever seen down here. Well, they, they work at it, and they're wonderful boys. They're all good students, uh, good trainers. They keep themselves in good shape, and... Uh, we just, uh, they just love to play basketball. I'm so happy, happy for you. Congratulations. May Thank I meet you. the boys? Yes, go right ahead. I'd like to meet uh, your wife. Yeah, Hi. This, this is Violet. Still yeah. got a voice, Violet? No, not much. <laughs> I saw you up shaking your finger a few times, screaming oh, and doing yeah. a little coaching. Well, was, I lead the cheers. <laughs> she was helping the referee. Okay. Uh, nice to see you, and congratulations to you, too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob Simpson. All over the place, you saw number 20. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you very much. You're a senior, going to continue your education? Yes, sir. Good. Want to play college ball? I hope so. Biggest thrill of your life? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. A boy that you heard me eulogize along with uh, Tom Kelly and Jack Reese throughout the tournament, an all-state footballer and an all-state 
basketballer, a great baseballer, a straight-A student. Boy, you're really something. Oh. Freddie Riddle. Well, I can't add anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Not much left, is there? You played a great tournament. Well, thank you. What, in your opinion, was the highlight of the entire season? Right here. Right here. The Centralia game must rank pretty high. Yes, sir. That was. I think that was our toughest game. Toughest of the year. game that you played all year. Now he's going here. You want to be a doctor? I plan on it if I if I can make it. You will make it. Straight A's. You got no cars. Well, <laughs> nice know. going. A fellow that broke an ankle or a leg early in the year came back just before tournament time. The unusual first name of Bogey. That's what they call me on the golf course, but his is real. Bogey Redmond. Congratulations, boy. Thank you very much. I don't know whether or not you know it, but you are the tournament's leading scorer. You were an outstanding performer throughout the tournament and made the interior of the offense really click. Nice going. Thank you very much. To you, this must be what? The epitome of success? Oh, you said it. <laughs> did you uh, play football, Bogey? Yes, sir. What do you play in football? And you got muscles. I don't even have a place for them. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Sir. How about that trophy? Is that something? Oh, is that something? Okay, now. Bob uh, Basola. Bob, congratulations. Thank you. How do you feel? Well, it's great. About the best. You know, during the game, I saw this Meadows look up at the scoreboard. You were about 20 ahead, and he said, do you smile? You wouldn't do it. Didn't he say that? That's right. <laughs> congratulations. Thank Meadows, you're a Dickens out there. Boy, you're trying to make break this guy up. Thank you, sir. Boy, you really hustle. How fast can you run? Are you a dash man? Uh, no, sir. I'm just, I play baseball. What do you play? Outfield, center field. Can you hit? I'm trying to, just spring. Good. May I meet the uh, uh, the freshman coach, Bill what? Bill Hellier. Bill Hellier, congratulations. I got a fine team, best in the state. Sure have. Sure. Bud, yeah. uh, the assistant coach, what is your last name? Bert Weber. Bert, Bert Weber, Weber, I'm yeah, sorry. Right. Congratulations to you. Thank I know you, you're very happy. Would you do me, the, I'll ask Verge to do it, excuse me. I want to go back over here. Verge, would you be good enough to introduce by name the boys in the back row while our camera gets a picture of them? All right, Harry Hildreth, a junior. Uh, Stan Burkett, a junior. 24 up there and our sixth man and was a regular in the, during the time uh, Bogey was out with a broken leg, Ronnie Moten. Uh, over here is uh, Ronnie Matakaitis and Ronnie's a sophomore. He's six foot three and that's Joe Brennan over there and Joe Brennan's a sophomore and he's six foot two. Thank you and this is your son, isn't it? The mascot? Come here, Mark. Come here. Hey, boy. Hi. Say hi. He says he's so excited he's not going to say anything. He lost his voice yelling. Say hi. Look up there. Now. Say hi. Wave, wave to all the people. Wave to them. Well, congratulations again, Verge and boys. A wonderful victory, and it's all yours. You were great. It's been a wonderful tournament, and we thank all of you for giving us a wonderful tournament. Now let's go back to Tom Kelly.